Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, this is the second session uh, of uh, this room uh, of uh, the DEFCON 2022. So welcome, uh, everybody. And uh, uh, the, the next talk is uh, Orhan by, uh, by Issues. Let's have a party. Uh, it will be presented by uh, Pep uh, Tuomari and Trosten uh, Swesik. So uh, well, please welcome and uh, the stage, stage is yours. Thank you so much, Lubomir. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, Overwhelmed by issues. So let's first go with who we are. So it's Pep and me. We both work at Red Hat. <laughs> and we both started in this uh, the team we are in, which is the, toss, the topic with Pep and operate first. It's on my side. Uh, if you're interested in this, join the session with Marcel Hilt this afternoon at 2 p.m. Some little announcement from our side. Sorry, the last advertising for today. So um, we are both uh, software engineers. And because we started uh, last year, uh, we had this problem looking into GitHub and being overwhelmed by issues. Good morning, Pep. How are you? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, yes, um, we are here to try to have a party uh, after the situation of uh, overwhelmed by issues. But that's what we will present in the next slide. Maybe we can get into what we are trying to convey today by uh, having a party overwhelmed by issues. Um, well, uh, first, uh, let's define, you know, what's the problem? What does it mean to be overwhelmed by issues? Here, we would like to uh, ask you, uh, everyone, why do you what do you understand by being overwhelmed by issues? We have some some ideas, but we also have a poll that you can see here, where you have you know potential things that can feel overwhelmed uh, when talking about issues. And by issues, we mean um, GitHub issues, for example, uh, whatever items that you use on your whatever tracking system, in our case, GitHub, to track the work to be done. So, Thor, what is for you? What does it mean for you to be overwhelmed by issues? I mean, for sure, it's the amount of issues. If you open it up and you look on your issues you have, then maybe you have to scroll a few times, and that's a lot. And the other thing is, how do I know what the issue is about? Especially if you're starting a new a team, and maybe the technique is different, the technical issues are different, or what you take care of is different then you have no idea sometimes what the headline means. And if you look into the issue, then you sometimes don't know exactly where to start. Yeah, that's that's uh, an aspect in my case, in my particular case, um, a, a key thing that I found when when starting to look at um, the issues in, in, in the team was, you know, there are, there are dozens and dozens of repos, and and it was hard for me to get the context and connect the dots between the the different issues across the the whole project. So the poll is ongoing. Um, we proposed a few ideas, but if you have others, we would like to hear as well uh, in the chat. And but, I'm seeing that. Anyway. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. No. No. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, and I'm seeing that as, uh, most votes so far are about missing information. And this is a thing that we will focus a little later on the slide. Let's call it kind of a quality thing. Yeah. Um, what what our are... goals are? For... Sorry, go on. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so the goals for us here is for this presentation, and hopefully you have something when you go out of it, is number one, bring the fun back into handling issues. And fun means make it easy get the team involved, let it be satisfying when you solve things and when you organize them. The non-goals are for sure, um, besides 42, which is the answer to everything, there will not be an out-of-the-box answer for every team and for every project or for every development situation. So we will tell you what you should focus on and maybe find your own grid and, and clusters to organize your issues and optimize them for the problem and the project you have going on. Yeah. What we expect you to take away from today's talk is we will share our experience so far this, this past few months since we joined the team and uh, try, well, started to tackle this uh, topic of, you know, making issue handling fun. And we will share the ideas that we had and how we started to implement them. Um, let's go then. 
we want this to to be a party let's move to the next slide um and we will have this analogy of a real party um it, just to keep in mind that uh, in our context having a party would be fixing everything like solving all the issues in a real world uh, the idea you have of a party is let's let's get together and have a lot of fun by you know dancing listening to music having food and talking but um in order to have a proper party and have real fun there are a few things that you need to take into account in the real world right Tor? right I mean, um, just jumping into the party and doing something um, can be fun. But if you don't know how to dance, for example, <laughs> or if you don't know where to get the drinks, then there's a problem and maybe the music is not playing. So starting with the party means also planning the party. And this means as far planning ahead, like the invitation list, because it's important when you look at your issues, what actually is the audience you are talking with to the issues like if you have a team and this team is just for cleaning up some um some hot problems from the last uh, days then maybe you need a different look on the issues than if you're planning for the next three months or what we're going to get have an epic running for the next year or something like this and so you have to also figure out who does what who brings the music who brings the food who does these things which means organizing ahead and then there's a party by themselves, by itself. And the party, this could be the fun part, solving issues and uh, bringing them on the right track and making them better, which would be the dancing thing. But what comes after the party, Pep? Well, you you know you need to clean up. Uh, you can see here in the picture you know, the the results of the party where you have uh, food and and drinks and all in the bed table. You you need to um, organize uh, like. Well, clean up. In the context of issue handling, um, you want to make sure that after issues have been solved, they reflect the real status, that, that everything is understood, properly understood, properly documented. For example, if there is a need to follow up with something that there is another issue for this follow-up, um, make sure that the priorities are clear for the next steps. The end goal here is um, that you this is an ongoing thing. We want to have a party every day, right? So we want to be able to have fun fixing issues or, or um, working on issues um, day to day. So this requires, um, well, a few things that we will introduce, uh, like some, some ideas that we will introduce uh, in, in this presentation. In particular, we have two main kind of uh, topics or, or uh, proposals to, to to share during this presentation the first one is in the next slide let me shortly um, um, make a stop here yeah. if I may. sorry because i see the words are still going on and missing information and details this exactly fits to the cleanup after the party because just solving the issues is maybe sometimes not enough for the people coming afterwards or for the next party so putting details in your issues that's one thing Okay, sorry, go ahead. And here we go with the quality. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah, two proposals. That's the first one. We uh, are going to affirm that if uh, all your issues have a good quality, and by quality we mean um, a definition of how you want them to look good, you know, what, what's, what is uh, quality, you know, good-looking issues. If all your issues look good and have good quality, then uh, this list of issues will not be overwhelming anymore. Um, that's kind of a bold statement. But we will explain, you know, the, the what makes that quality and, and hopefully with the, the, the rest of the context, um, it will become clear how this helps you, you know, have fun with the issues. Um, what makes good quality for the issues? Well, there, there are a few ingredients. Um, this is a list. Um, you, well, obviously, starting from the bottom, um, an obvious thing is that they are they are properly written, uh, uh, an issue that qualifies the problem statement properly, etc. But there's more. Um, you want to make sure that the, there are some labels that help you classify the issues. That's a bit of a spoiler of the next uh, uh, statement that we have. Um, the idea, the the list, you know. This list is 
a set of th tools that will help you achieve that goal, that main idea that you look at the issues and you are happy looking at them. Oh, look, what a nice issue I have here. It, it's clear what needs to be done, what, you know, the when this can happen, what tools do I need to solve it, etc. right? Um, and one aspect. Oh, yeah. No, and yeah. you don't have to invite the wheel, um, reinvent the wheel all the time. So we um, leaned our ideas to the Kubernetes contributors community, and the link is in the presentation. You, you get it's public the presentation, so you can look there. And so labels is a thing. Um, I'm, yeah. So one yeah. other idea what labels mean, for example, here is from the Minikube project. So a label could be what kind of issue you have. Like um, if it's a bug, it is a feature, if it's a cleanup thing or just a documentation. Or if you go into the next uh, slide, then you, if you are developing for different operating systems, a label could be for what operating system you are uh, coding this uh, thing right now. And one priority, which uh, one thing which is mostly in all projects important, the priority of an issue. So here in this case, uh, important long-term backlog, something like this. And some people use the priority as a life cycle. Um, that depends on the project you have. We just mentioned it here. Yeah, a couple of final points about quality. Um, one, is, one of them is that um, it depends on um, what moment in time you are and what you are wanted. You are for saying, so I'll, I'll give you a concrete example. If you if you are going to fix, um, you know, right now want to see what box you need to fix um you might have some standards for quality uh, at this point in time but maybe you launch a service and those those um standards change so uh, things like the time to resolve might be bound to an slo that you set what i want to say is this quality or the, the this set of standards is bound to um, it's not fixed it's bound to change over time um the other thing the other aspect is also the audience of who is looking at the issues, you know, uh, looking at an issue might make you happy, but some different stakeholder might not be so happy. So it's important to define the quality that makes everyone happy. Let's say. Right. And so then we've talked about overhead and sometimes the feeling producing stuff ahead uh, or it's overhead makes things complicated or taking too long. But at the end, you can't control what you can't measure. Um, me coming from a, the, my last jobs were like in building dashboards for financial things. So control means not controlling of money necessarily, but control means being prepared. So here, Walting with Bears, one of my favorite authors from Tom DiMarco. Um, if you know that the bear is heavy and steps on your foot, maybe you're wearing the right shoes. If coming back to the party, if you know that there could be a fire, you have a fire thing which you are prepared which makes you enjoy the party and solving the problems more because if you have everything prepared and you measure things right and you know what's coming up, then you can just focus on the issue because no, you know that everything else is taken care of because you organize ahead or afterwards. Yeah, it's not about, you know, imposing control. It's more about uh, being able to relax and have fun, right? Um, right. <laughs> Okay, with this, we go to our second main proposal of the topic. Um, so you are overwhelmed. You have an elephant here, a big elephant that you have to eat. How do you eat an elephant? Well, you, one bite at a time. And translating this into um, the world of solving issues, the idea is that you should um, apply proper filters to show you um, and clusters of issues. So filtering them in groups uh, will help you eat that whole elephant uh, one bite at a time. One point here is that we mentioned in the previous point about quality, What? how do you define quality? Um, this will, you know, having quality issues will actually enable, is a kind of a prerequisite for, for achieving this, being able to um, tailor the, 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 the cluster of issues that you look at 
any time. A classical example of this is how to, to distinguish, you know, urgent versus important issues. What is urgent? What is important? Let let's not the urgent prevent you from doing the important stuff, right? But how do you define what's urgent? It depends. Uh, that's what you define on when you define your criteria and your, the quality of of the issues. Right. And so these two statements we have here, the one about the quality earlier and this one about the cluster is taking care of number one, um, the, um, the quality that you know what's going on in the issues. And the second one, if you don't, that you don't have too much, that's a pure amount. And by clustering issues, you can kind of reduce the amount of issues that you're taking care of at this particular time or place that you are in your project. Cool. Well, um, one thing that we have found when uh, implementing this um, is that preparation is key. Um, in the end, the last point here is you, you need a clean starting point. And um, basically, you cannot start to have the party back to the, the steps about how to have a fun party. You need to prepare, right? And that's very key in the, in the world of issues as well. You need to know... Uh, who the audience who is going to look at the issues for example and and in which context uh, this is the audience and goal thing are we now going to look at which what work should be done over the next screen over the next quarter or are we looking at what do i have to do today right different mm, requirements like those uh, imply um, different views and different so it's it's important to know what what you're trying to to see, and well, there are tools to 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 help you achieve each of those um, goals. Let's say, um, in particular, here we are going to talk about two. Uh, one again, we we are taking inspiration of the Kubernetes ecosystem and how they do things. One of the tools is Triage Party that actually inspired the name of this talk. Um, it helps with the, well, as the name says, triaging, more, more on the day-to-day -day or what we call the bottom-up approach. We will clarify in a bit. And the other tool that we use as well, we, we have all the issues we um, uh, in, in GitHub issues, and we use GitHub projects to help uh, the top-down approach here. Um, Right. So, and, and if you got and you know some other tools, because we're always looking and improving our ideas, feel free to put them in the chat and we would love to share them with the community afterwards. And so let's go a little bit more into details now how a party, I mean, the tool triage party would look like. Um, why did we choose triage party? I mean, GitHub comes with a lot of nice features and GitLab does too and Git project, there's everything going on. But one of the main things we figured out is creating filters for maybe specific problems to find the right issues was not helping. Um, GitHub was not helping there. So Triage Party has like an amazing set of filters you can use, um, regular expressions and even more. And so that's why we at some point decided to try Triage Party. Uh, you can easily fork it from the GitHub Triage Party Google area you, we started locally and then deployed it on um, on our operate first system. Um, we used the powerful filters to create different clusters. I mean, we talked about audience and time in your project. So you create filters and you can create a collection of filters to design different kind of dashboards in your browser because it's a web tool in this case. And it gets also the fun part we talked about because there's a party mode. You can invite like an amount of people from your team and this tool automatically splits the open issues up to these uh, to all of your team members and you can solve them together and at the end you come together and find uh, things that are not solved yet or maybe not labeled or not the right qualities in there. Um, some things you can't do, it's no direct edit mode for issues so you have to always go into the YAML file to do this and there's no bulk edit. Always, if you click on a, an issue, it goes directly to GitHub yet. You want to add, like to add something, Pep, here? That's... No, just to summarize, it's a very nice front end to help you show, you know, it, not edit, as, as you said, but it will help you achieve that uh, clustering of issues and showing you views that 
help you, you know, eat the elephant one bite at a time. We have examples here, but we're running a bit Oops, late. Sorry. I don't know if we want to. No, no, no. I think we can skip. We had example of configurations, but yeah, kind of emphasize that it's just to summarize. It's uh, triage party allows you to filter on more sophisticated ways than GitHub. That's that's the message, and that that will let you achieve that classification. But yeah, let's move on yeah. to and the shared present because it's, we, we, we thought first of doing a live demo, but we realized it takes too much time. So in the presentation, presentation which is shared, shared at the end, you see some uh, screenshots from the definitions and the different rules. Yeah, and uh, again, uh, sorry, we couldn't run a, a live demo here, but we have uh, this uh, screen, a couple of screenshots of our, we have two deployments of, of uh, triage party for each of our teams. This is uh, Thor's um, initial view of triage party. I'll highlight here. Um, I don't know if you want to Thor, that's your. Yeah, triage party I mean, it's, you see, this is a, an example where you see if uh, you. This, this is not really clustered and really labeled because we have the top down approach on our team. And this is an, a bad example, how you see, because it says um, check daily, and there are 341 issues on this cluster view. So the generic uh, template from um, triage party is here not working for our team. So there needs to be some customization. And then we go. To yeah. In the other team. hand, that's 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 our triage party, which uh, no, no, no. Yeah. You, you were showing that looks more manageable. Uh, this is, again, the initial view, what, what the tool showed us initially. Um, it's a, a fewer number of, of, of cases resulting of our team had been using more labels. But on the other hand, that doesn't mean it's not overwhelming. As we mentioned at the beginning, there are multiple criteria that can result on overwhelming issues. And in this case, it was uh, quite hard, even if the number was low, uh, quite hard to actually triage them because missing context, let's say, in this case. OK, so our experience so far, we didn't come to a final solution yet because we want to have make it fun. And until it's not fun for us, it's a work in progress. We will not present it or force it onto the team. So we are still in sharpening the saw, which means we need some fine tuning, as you saw. Um, we have also different approaches of the team, top down and bottom up. Um, Pep will mention this in the next two um, uh, panels here. And um, as I said, it's not, we are not having fun. We don't push it to the team. So uh, Pep, you would like to go to top down and bottom up? Yeah, uh, bottom up meaning uh, the triage uh, refining approach where Basically, triage party, the tool shines and uh, looking at individual issues and then, you know, looking at them individually. That helps you do the things right. So it helps you with making sure that each issue has good quality, for example. But it doesn't help you connect the dots and, and, and get that context. This is kind of where the top down approach uh, comes handy, um, which is looking at the things at a global level, like look at those start from those issues that I mentioned that are tracking work for the next uh, few months um, and then dive, dive, dive under. So I think we can move to the next uh, and final slide because this, this correlates um, well. Um, we believe one of the recommendations we, we have for you is we believe we, you need both approaches, both top down and bottom up. Um, they are quite different, but they complement each other. You cannot do just triaging like individual issues. You need that high level view, but the high level view by itself is not alone. You need good quality individual issues, right? That's one of the recommendations. Um, Thor, more you want to cover the others? Uh, no, I think uh, it's kind I of mean, a summary. Right. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, so in the general, Define your quality, know ahead what you want to go, what is your audience. Um, use the filters from um, triage party to yeah, sort the things a little better and cluster them, which makes it easier. And think about the purpose for all the tabs you're creating on triage party. And then do both things, top down and bottom up. Plan ahead and work and have fun with the issues. Yeah, and we hope that this will um you know allow you to have fun working on those issues the two things um 
the questions are pretty short because we are running out of time. We know this. We are in this adventure, work adventure area later on. If you want to talk to us, here's our contact details. Feel free. And the slides, there is some attachment at the slides where you find links to all our th things we talked about, to our triage party deployments, and also a little checklist how you can maybe make more fun of your triaging your issues. <laughs> thank you. Have fun. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Justin and Beb, for your uh, great presentation. So everybody, feel free to go to the work adventure. I've already mentioned here. And uh, see you in the next talk. Thank you very much again. And bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you.